Hey guys, Jim here. Wanted to share with you now a, another new acquisition, another piece that I picked up while I was at uh, the Atlanta show, Blade 2014. It was a, uh, a wonderful experience overall just dealing uh, with the maker and then getting the opportunity to buy this knife was really icing on the cake. Uh, for those that don't know, this is an Andy Fitz. This is his model called the Angel Wing. And it's one of the smallest knives that I own at this point. I've kind of gone back and forth over the past two or three years. And there was a time that I really enjoyed carrying very small knives. And then I really fell out of it completely. Like if it was under three and a half inches, I wouldn't even look at it. And to be honest with you, if I'd seen this on the internet listed somewhere for sale with a three inch blade, four inch handle, um, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But the way I was able to purchase this, it actually made me break a few of the rules that I have. Uh, one is I would never buy a three inch knife. Obviously, now I have. I would never buy a knife with a really huge spoon clip, but here I have. And I typically don't buy knives that are flippers that aren't on bearings. Now, that's not a, a hard and fast rule because if a maker's really, really good, sometimes you can't even friggin' tell. And this is another one that is uh, on washers that flips every bit as good as knives that I have on bearings. No matter how I do it, whether I push button it, which of course is the fastest way, or light switch it, it just works. And it's smooth and it's fast and, well, shit, it's awesome. So, uh, quick backstory: I had met Andy for the first time um, on, I want to say it was Friday night after the show, down in the pit. And this was like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Everything was kind of winding down, and we were bullshitting a lot. And we spent a couple hours together just kind of sitting there talking, uh, people coming and going, having a lot of fun. And I really got to know him really well. And he is just one of the absolute nicest guys that I've had a chance to hang out with. Just a super stellar guy. And I knew I already liked his work because I have owned one of his other knives before. And... He pulled this out of his uh, little backpack there because I, I said, you know, do you have anything at all that you brought with you? He's like, everything's sold except for this one. He goes, but I'll show it to you. He goes, but it's uh, a customer is actually coming to pick it up. And I played with this and went, man, it's so chunky. It takes away from the fact that it's so tiny. And I'm like, just sell it to me. Sell it to me. He's like, I can't because the guy's coming to pick it up. And I said, okay, whatever. Um, so I went by to see him again on Sunday over at his table. And we were hanging out and talking, and he had his uh, young son with him. I think his son's about 12 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And he's already gotten his son into making knives. He's making some really cool little fixed blade knives. And actually, many of them had already sold. He only had two or three left on Sunday uh, when I got a chance to see him. And he still had this knife. And I said, what happened? He says, the guy never showed up. I said, well, shit, well, what do you want for it? He's like, well, you know, I was going to sell it for six fifty. dollars that's, that's the price. I'm like, here, here's six fifty cash. Just no need to go home with a knife, and especially because I liked it that much. And it was just uh, serendipitous, I suppose, that we had gotten the chance to get to know each other, and also the guy never came to pick up his knife, and also I still had a little bit of cash left over at the end of the show to be able to pick it up. And this was, I do believe, my, my last official acquisition of the show. And I got to tell you, it's one of my favorites. This thing is a little rocket and beautifully made. Now, we'll start here with the clip. You guys know I'm really, really, really picky on my clips. Number one, I don't like bent spring clips on a custom knife, anything that's over $400. I feel at that point, a more expensive custom sculpted clip is really uh, necessary. I'm also not a big fan of big spoon clips either, but I got to tell you, there's something about this one that I like. Number one, I do like the decoration. He obviously put a lot of time into it. Um, this is all hand-bent titanium, blue anodized, and he did this cool, it looks like water droplets. When you really look at it, I'm not sure how it's going to play in HD on my camera with this lighting, but especially out in natural lighting in the sunlight, it looks like water droplets. It's friggin' cool as shit. And I really thought it was going to be obtrusive because it comes up really high here and the duckbill comes out really, really far. Here's the funny thing, though. 
that's exactly where my fingers are going when I'm holding it. So if I'm holding it in any kind of utilitarian way, which he did hammer off the back here so that you have it, not really a choil, but you do have a blocked off area that's unsharpened for your finger. I really haven't had an issue. When I'm holding it this way, it falls right in between my knuckles there. And believe me, you guys know me, if this thing was obtrusive, I would certainly be screaming at the top of my lungs about it uh, because you've seen me do that on plenty of videos. But it, it's actually really, really nice. Uh, holding in a reverse grip, again, my fingers can drop into those grooves really, really easily. Not that this is going to be a tactical knife and this is going to be something you're really going to use for defense. But listen, uh, you're going to rely on anything that's in your pocket if you have to. And yeah, it works. The clip works. Really, really strong retention, though. So I am actually going to take this off and give it a little bit of a tweak just so it's a little bit less. Let me close the blade so I don't hurt myself here. But it does take quite a bit to get that open. So getting it in and out of jeans is a little bit tricky. Uh, I am able to do it, but it's not as easy as I would like. So at least that's a really simple fix that I can do myself. The carbon fiber work is really, really nicely done. Good carbon fiber. Uh, I haven't really seen any voids with my naked eye. If there are any, it will most certainly show up here under my HD lens. That's always kind of the curse of doing these videos in HD. But, uh, I mean, everything is just done nicely. The materials are matched up really, really well. Almost completely seamless. You really don't feel from one material to the next. He's got a really nice consistent blue to the titanium. I have battled, tried to get makers to work with getting me this royal blue in titanium and it's either too light like baby blue or it's splotchy or it's uneven from one area to the next and this is a consistent blue all the way around. Now you'll notice we open this up, there is your lockup. Great lock geometry on here. And he has very carefully chosen to go with thicker titanium on this side than on this side to create a stronger lock. Because it's not really, I mean obviously there's, there's a strong consideration toward design when you're making any knife. But he really wants to make these usable and tough knives even though it's only a little 3 inch knife. So he really wanted to make sure he had very, very good lockup. It's a very strong lock bar on here. Very thick. Sorry for little bits of pocket lint in there. I, I have been carrying this knife. Clean pass-through design with two simple standoffs. Again, the anodizing is phenomenal. Looks great. Clean work all the way around. Nice finishing on the carbon fiber. All the way around, I got to tell you, I was really, really surprised that I fell so much in love with this size of knife. Let's put this down and give you some size comparisons. You guys know that my favorite small knife is my custom Brad Southerd, my Tarsus. And it's even smaller than my Tarsus. Holy shit. Uh, I will bring out a knife that more people have handled. This is just a regular old production Spyderco Southerd. And you see, and the Spyderco Southerd is not a really big knife. This is tremendously smaller. Now, when we talk about how it feels in the hand, it's really about the thickness. So we'll put the Southerd, Spyderco Southerd down. And take a look here. And you see there is a very big difference there. This is tremendously thicker and it takes up a lot more room in the hand. The blade stock is also much, much thicker. Uh, he typically uses CPM 154 on the steel. I didn't ask him on this one, but I'm going to assume that it is CPM 154 on this one as well. Here's the fun thing. Um, while Andy's books aren't currently open, and he's just updated his website recently to reflect that, he's making the move into becoming a full-time knife maker. So he's left his primary employment to chase the dream of becoming a full-time knife maker. Now, he's been doing this for a shit long time. It's, it's not like, you know, he just came up in the past five years or something. But he's always been a part-time guy, so he doesn't put a hell of a lot of knives out there. But now that he's made that switch, it's going to be a lot easier to get your hands on his knives. I know a lot of guys right now are paying 
close to double on the secondary market for his various models. And I got to tell you, the, the quality, the craftsmanship, the fit and finish, as you can see that even the hand rub satin on the blade, his work really is extraordinary, and he's not charging an arm and a leg for it. Uh, his larger models, like the Archangel, you're going to pay around, you know, uh, $800 or so. This little guy right here in the six to $700 range. And the only real, I, I guess, nitpick I would have on it is the lead into the edge right there. I mean, it's, it's not the prettiest, but that's it. I mean, and if that's all I can knock the knife on is a simple blemish that can really be taken care of in less than five minutes, I've got no complaints. What you're looking at is a completely hand-built knife. He doesn't have a CNC or a water jet or wire EDM. Everything is done by hand. So it takes a long time to make each knife. It's a much more laborious process. And it's more difficult to get such a clean, smooth, almost machine-like finish out of it. This is the type of work that you expect to see from someone charging either more money or using some sort of smart technology to get the monkey work out of the way. And he's achieving this in the slowest possible way, but the best possible way. I love the balance. I love the feel. It is extraordinarily lightweight. This has been one uh, I've had a lot of fun carrying in shorts. I have certain knives. My Southern is one um, that I carry in my shorts because it's slim, it's small, it's lightweight. Uh, you know, when you're wearing jeans, it almost doesn't matter. You can carry a Medford Praetorian or you know, it doesn't matter what you carry because jeans, it's a lot easier to support it. But in shorts, it, you really feel the additional weight. In shorts, you know, they wear different. A big heavy knife will flop around on your leg. This thing is lightweight with all that carbon fiber. Nice feel to it. It's chunky, so it's easy to grab when you're reaching for it. And I got to tell you, for a non-bearing knife, this thing is so much fun. So much friggin' fun to play with. There are days that I'll just kind of pick this one up, even if I'm carrying a different knife. I'll go through my case, and I'll just sit there and play with it and flip it. There are a couple of knives I do that with, and this is one of them. I just love the feeling in the hand. It's just one of those knives that you don't want to put down. And that's coming from somebody that just doesn't really do the small knife thing anymore. But there's something about this one. I love his grind. I love the two-tone nature. Even though the whole knife, or excuse me, the whole blade is done in a hand rub satin, he's created a two-tone effect between the primary bevel and the flats. And he's got a really prominent swedge up here as well. He's done a fantastic job all the way around. I apologize, that was my, uh, my phone going off there. And yeah, here's the thing. If, if you bought this knife and went, oh, I just can't get past the clip. I love everything about the knife. It feels good. It flips good. It's got a great edge. It's got, you know, this and that, but just can't get past the clip. It's a clip. He can make pretty much any clip for it. This, in my opinion, is kind of a showpiece when it's sitting in the pocket. If this were completely plain and it was just a raw titanium, you know, bead blasted, big spoon clip, visually I wouldn't be in love with it. Again, it's not as obtrusive as I thought it was going to be, but visually I wouldn't be in love with it. But being that he's done the, the decorative surfaces on here, I think it really does add to the character and the overall feel of the knife. For me, there's not really anything that I would change. It just, it looks and feels really, really good. And the great thing is when you do get the chance to work with Andy and you do have an order in, he'll work with pretty much any material. If you said, oh, I want a full Timascus and then I want a uh, titanium sculpted clip, boom, he'd do that for you. So keep your eyes open, you know, keep an eye on his website. It's fitsknives.com. Obviously, you can see how to spell fits. And... He also is now on Instagram. He's not very active on there, and I'm kind of pushing at him to become a little more active because it's such a wonderful community out there for, uh, for knife lovers. Uh, and it should be under Fitz Knives there as well, so just check Fitz Knives on Instagram. 
and keep an eye on what he's doing. And at some point, he's going to have to come out there and say, okay, I'm opening up my books. If you get the chance, jump on them. You know, you're not breaking the bank. You're not spending a thousand plus dollars and yet you're still getting a full handmade product. And that's getting increasingly rarer and rarer these days. You're getting into something that performs really, really well. I can't get past how great that feels. And I don't know if my camera is really going to pick up the sound of it or not, but it's a very solid open. Very fast. It feels every bit as good as it looks. Let me see if we can get some nice tight macros in here. And you look at the clean workmanship all the way around. Even the tiny little notches that's been done there. So you have a little bit of grip for your thumb on the lock bar. It's just a knife I've had fun playing with. I've had fun ogling. He's got a nice polish to his carbon fiber. Not a lot of guys are doing polished carbon fiber. And I don't think I'd want every knife in polished carbon fiber. But I do like the look from time to time. I mean, there's, there's just no, no detectable flaws. Like I said, except for that one little bit on each side there of the lead-in. That's it. But every all of the construction is done beautifully. Finished well. It de didn't leave his bench with issues and problems or, you know, the blades off center or anything like that. It favors the show side just a tad, just a tiny little bit. And I love how much room he's left there between the blade edge and the standoffs. No chance of it hitting the standoffs. It sounds funny to say that, but I have purchased knives for well over $1,000 that the damn blade was banging into either the, uh, the backspacer or the standoffs. It's completely finished everything, even the back side of the blade. All the best care was given. There is no movement in that pivot whatsoever. No movement in the lock. It just... It's just a, a, a rocking little rocket, man, and I'm having a shitload of fun with it. I look forward to owning more of them as well in the future. So if you get the chance, uh, follow him on Instagram, check out his website, and if he ever gets to the point where he's able to say, okay, my books are open, sign up now, do it. And, and get something special, get something fun. You're not breaking the bank to do it, at least in my opinion, as compared to other hand-built, full-custom knives. I think it's a great value, and he's one hell of an awesome guy. If you get the chance to talk to him, take the opportunity. He's a really smart guy, really super nice guy. And that's the kind of guys I love to support. You know, you don't really ever hear me coming out here going, oh, buy from this guy. He's kind of a dick, but he makes a good knife. It's just not who I am. I like to deal with people that, I don't know, I guess are worthy uh, of that business. And it's not I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm determining their worth. But the way they treat their customers, when you start hearing horror stories from multiple people on forums and Instagram and everywhere else, that's the kind of people that you tend to stay away from. And it's the guys that will bend over backwards to make you happy. The guys that do actually enjoy talking to their customers. Again, not everybody has the time to do that as much as they'd like to, but they're showing that genuine effort. Those are the guys that you feel a little more comfortable spending this amount of money with. And Andy certainly is one of those guys. All right, I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm going to cut it off. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. See you guys on the next video.